Welcome back to Hearthstone Grandmasters. Thanks for sticking with us through that, and I promise it will be worth your while. With Shaxi versus Tom Gia, two of my favorite players to watch for very different reasons indeed. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that for last week, Shaxi, uh, he was a little bit more mad than genius as the uh, two <laughs> words that I would describe to him there, because there were a lot of plays that I was left pretty perplexed by, to be honest. Yeah, I think it was particularly on the Demon Hunter that we yeah. diverged a lot with our lines and what Shaxi ultimately ended up going for. A lot of it may be mistimed on the freeze, which is such a big aspect in the mirror these days. But now he's had a whole week to clean it up, get some more practice, and also prepare some other decks because, of course, we are facing a slightly different meta. I expected to see a lot more Priest in APAC than is actually represented. But Same. no surprise is that Warriors are still mutually being banned. Yeah, the other kind of, I suppose you could call it as well, a signature deck from Tom here is the Highlander Rogue. He hasn't brought it every week, but I think he's definitely the player who has brought it the most here in Asia Pacific so far. And he's been having a decent amount of success with it. Personally, I, I like this build of the deck. I think Highlander Rogue has a real spot in the metagame at the moment, especially with uh, some of the key cards for Secret Rogue having been nerfed, of course, in the Blackjack Stunner and Hanar which are still being run in this version of the deck, but they're less core to the overall strategy. It's true. They're less dependent on getting that Hanar to go off in the early game or getting the huge tempo swing with the Blackjack Stunner, although it's there to still be a pretty good bonus. The big one here, I think, that we don't usually see is inclusion of a Kama, which is there to supplement the stealth package al along with the Greyheart Sage. I don't think he's running the 2-mana 1-3 that draws a card. Mm -hmm. I think as far as stealth minions go, that seems to be a bit more useful than a comma. But, you know, this is a time when decks are changing. There might be room for experimentation. Yeah, it's one of the things where a comma is clearly a very, very powerful card. At least if you look at the, the first half of the build, a, a spider tank with stealth, as it is often touted as being, is a very powerful card, especially when you have synergy to go along with it. It's really just, of course, the prime that I think players feel is a little bit uh, not so well suited to the current metagame, given that you want something that has immediate effect rather than a permanent stealth. Um, but we may be seeing from Tom here a slightly more aggressive approach in the light game if he is able to hit a Karma Prime. But as we kind of brushed over there from Shaxi, it's much more the standard stuff that we are seeing from him with really the Rogue instead of the Hunter being the, uh, this, uh, the twist on his fourth deck here. It's true. And we're not seeing the questings anymore from no. his Demon Hunter. It is a more standard build. He's got the One Sightless Watcher, which has been coming a little bit back into popularity with Crimson Sigil Runner exiting some of the lists, but it will be that rogue there. Sorry, this guy here in the list, and I just missed it. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about uh, Tom's uh, version of the deck that doesn't have the... Oh, right, 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 yes, right, you're, right, you're right. Yeah, sorry. I just <laughs> saw it wrong. I thought that was Tom on the rogue there. My mistake. But the main thing here for Shaxi is something that I feel like has been weirdly uh, missing from Rogue overall has been big Edwins. I don't know exactly what's happened, but they've just gone entirely by the wayside. Uh, but here, of course, this is one of the best ways that you can start beating down Demon Hunter in the early game is by getting down a big Edwin. The other way you can win the early game is just if the Demon Hunter hits nothing to do. Oh, yes. This is so depressing to see for Tom. He can play the... Bellwing next turn, but it involves using Twin Slices to the Yikes. base for no additional value. Whereas for Shakti, he has his choice of what 3-drop so he wants to coin options. out. Of course, the benefit of Miscreant first means that you get the lackeys in hand to eventually use to buff Edwin or just shore up an A3. Yeah, I think the play I'm, a, I'm the least fan of on this turn is Coin Edwin. I would hear out the answer for Coin Miscreant or just playing the Sky Vatir because, of course, the immediate impact right. is about the same. And again, it's just slow, slow, slow for Tom. Oh, oh. It's not but, over. Demon Hunter yeah. can swing things back with these kinds of hands, but... Oh! It's starting to look much worse for him now. It really is. Okay, to be fair, this is not a prime Shadow Step target, and also the coin would not get any additional value if played here for Shaxi. But he just gets to put a huge minion on board, whereas I was gonna say before this, it's not looking that bad for Tom because Shaxi wasn't putting on very much pressure, but now there's the opportunity to just 
snowball if he wants to. Could I take a more measured approach, get the max value he can, and possibly just build an even bigger Edwin next turn? I love this line from Shaxi, even ignoring the fact that he got Loot Hoard, which is absolutely insane here. Oh, just because yeah. he can go for value off of his lackeys by shadow stepping it next turn, he's very, very likely to end up with an 8 8 Edwin, or at least a 6 6 Edwin, on the following turn, um, which should be more than big enough, especially when you factor in the extra value from the lackey generated. You will get full size on the Edwin if he wants to. Tom, finally with some development here, but it looks so fragile against the board that Shaxi has put together. You see the inclusion of Blowtorch Tabatur as well. I think that is a two of in Shaxi's list. That's the spice he's bringing this week, which is particularly well positioned against Hunter. I think we were seeing this tech from Psycho over in Europe mm. last week, and Shaxi's adopted it now. There's plenty more spice from Psycho in particular this week over in the European region. Uh -huh. So make sure you are tuning in later because I personally cannot wait to see how his weird rogue deck in particular shakes up. Uh, but with a much more standard rogue play here, we see Shaxi going with the upgrade on the miscreant Ooh! into Pit Lord. Hello? But the funny thing is, <laughs> he wants to evolve it again because he wants to get a bigger Edwin, and it's not like he can step any other minion because he wants this Faceless Lackey to trade True. into Sater Overseer. Oh, he's gonna hold off on Edwin still. <laughs> okay, I think I this is fine. I'm surprised by this. <laughs> well, he's still in a great I position on the board, right? I still think you make the big Edwin. Really? Okay, I guess that gets punished by the freeze, which we can see Tom has if you go all in on one minion, and presumably the Pit Lord gets smaller yeah. after being evolved. And now we see most of a board clear coming down for Shaxi. So there's still opportunities to play Edwin, but it is a lot less clean this turn. If he wants, he could just make a 6-6. Six -six. He could just so shadow step this options. Eviscerate and play Edwin. But that seems a little bit too slow. I mean, he has a way to go all in here with Goblin Lackey and Shadow Stepping it. So he rushes the oh, Titanic right. Lackey and the Miscreant up to two attack. Clear off the Glaive Bound and get a 10-10 Edwin, I think. But if you were going to do that, you would not want up the Miscreant. You would not. You would torn up the Warlock. It looks like he's just going to not kill off the glaive down. It creates a big taunt in the way and still puts a lot of pressure on the yep. board. I think this is fine. Yeah, I think this is probably even better because Tom almost certainly has a way to clear off the extra two damage. So what? He's then just sunk more damage into a taunt and your Edwin is still knocking about. Already for Tom, because he's fallen behind in the early game, I feel like he needs to be building towards an altruist turn. Yep. Hmm. And it is not looking as far <laughs> off uh, as it does lands. Kind of. He, the, the problem is he needs a way to attack, connect damage to face immediately. Um, yeah. Which I guess he could set up on this turn. If he freezes the Edwin right. and attacks into the Miscreant and I-beams it, then he's at least setting up most of the way uh, yeah. to sticking a minion on board. That is what I'm looking at. And if he draws into another freeze, we could even see him set up for another turn using just the skull. Sure, that sounds good to me as well. And it's not negligible the amount of board presence he's put here now. It's true. Yeah. Shaxi has the option to play an active hog. I think it is pretty bad though. Far too slow. Honestly. Yeah, this is... It's rare that I say you don't go for Tog on 6 when it's activated, but this is just that little bit too much. You've got to protect your board. Other options include hmm. Seal Fate plus Freeze the 6-2. Yep. You could uh, deviate and play a Lackey if it's a good one. That can off the top, say, Damage or Rush. Oh, that'll do. Ooh. But the rest of the turn then just becomes Dagger Up or Eviscerate. I still am liking the look of the Freeze, actually, just to put more stats on board. It also saves the Lackey in hand for pairing with Tog. Mm. 
Mm. Not sure if I'm a fan of this. It does completely deal with Tom's board, though, so I'll give him that. And the other benefit is, of course, that you now have a freeze in hand, which against Demon Hunter, when it can go face, yep. is so powerful, which I think is Shaxi's main thinking behind this play. Very true. Tom has left the Edwin up. No choice there, of course. He was hoping to get the Shadow Weaver off the top from Skull, but not available. Going to take a beating this turn, but hmm. this could be one of the craziest altruists I've seen in a while. It's going to have to be, I think, if he wants to dig himself out of this one, because that Edwin is not going anywhere anytime soon. And Shaxi could have a pretty decent read as well that Tom is building up to something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, this could be the turn to freeze face. Cause major disruption. I think this is absolutely the turn to freeze face. And for the next turn as well, with the second Frozen Shadow Weaver, the only thing he needs to be afraid of now, like you said, is the Altruis, against which the Ancestral Guardian is a little bit weaker. And now, Tom can't get damaged to the base, so the Bell Wings can't be reduced <laughs> to zero. Oh, man. And the Altruis turn is pretty much all but shut off. Well, he can get the damage through to face through the Altruis, right? He can go Altruis, Battle okay. Fiend, Umber Wing. That's true, true. a fair bit already. Then start playing the Frenzied Fell Wings. He has to get up to 10, though, here, if he wants to be able to clear off the Edwin. And the Twin Slices are just going to be used for procs, yeah. I think. Oh, wait, no, sorry. He can go Glaive Bound, then the leftmost Fell Wing, then the other Fell Wing is free. And that is still not enough oh. to deal with Mr. Van Cleef. The freeze comes in so clutch for Shaxi here. This could have been so huge had he not frozen anything. I think that could have just been game. And it really speaks to Shaxi's play on the previous turn. Yes, he top decked the second one. But has he been, had he gone for that too aggressively and not drawn the second frozen Shadow Weaver, we could have been looking at that exact same situation but with a glaive bound swinging in and all of a sudden Tom dominating the board. You bring up a very good point. I will concede that point to Shaq. The use of weapon there and Cobalt wasn't too bad at all and it gave him such a huge upside to save that freeze. So that will be Demon Hunter taking a loss here. I feel like we've seen Demon Hunter lose a fair bit more than I expected it to today, uh, especially to Hunters. It uh, really uh, just comes into what we've seen from Frosty as the one player in APAC to not bring Demon Hunter. As he was saying overall, in his testing, he just found it personally to be too weak now that the Crimson Sigil Runners are down to 1-1. So we're obviously seeing most players just omit them from the list entirely. Still a couple of players, believers like Surrender, had put it in there. Um, but I can at least see where uh, the thought process had come from, uh, from Frosty, where it does just feel significantly weaker now. It is just humorous to me that after all of the rounds of nurse to Demon Hunter and all the nerfs that seem bigger, we're seeing huge mana yeah. um, increases. We're seeing just the I-beam from zero to one is potentially big. After all of that, it is the nerf of Crimson Sigil Runner, <laughs> which didn't even seem like a big offender to me from two to one attack being the straw that broke Illidan's back, perhaps. Yeah, it definitely feels that way. It's just too many nerfs one after the other in order to keep playing it consistently. But still, most of the field do think it's worth playing. And even though it is looking at a slightly lower win percentage, still a strong deck overall. And I think Tom will be in a good chance of taking a win should he queue it up again, which we can see he is going to do as are both players. We're guaranteed at least one win here for a Demon Hunter. Oh, yes, because that always affects the stats in the mirrors. Oh, yeah. It's so funny that the only wins that Demon Hunter has seemed to take today outside of the mirrors are against Druid. And that class is not even uh, a particularly strong one unless you are mm. of the APAC persuasion. So I think for Mijia, this matchup in particular was the really weird one from Shaxi last week. The one that he showed, right. I, I think, just pretty poor understanding of how you're supposed to play it. Obviously, with a full mull and finding none of the good cards in the matchup, you cannot fault him on that, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think already we're seeing Tom with a very nice start to the hand, keeping the Twin Slice I love in the matchup, and finding the Frozen Shadow Weaver, again, does put him in a great position here. 
the other big deal is that he didn't get too carried away with, say, coining um, uh, the Umbra Wing and saying, oh, I have Chaos Strike to follow up anyway. I think holding back the resources is also very important here. Coin is deceptively powerful in this matchup. Yeah. Being able to go for an earlier War Glaives, a timely glaive bound, or even just fit in a little bit more removal or extra hero power impatient. is great reason to hold it back unless you really need it or you get a huge payoff. So, are you expecting to not play Chaos Strike here? I think I would just quite happily take the cycle right. here to try and uh, bolster mm -hmm. my next few turns. It is sad that there's no development behind it, but I do think I'd go for that. How about the inclusion of Frenzied Fell Wings? I think is usually not so useful in the mirror because in the early turns, which is ideally when you want to play the Fell Wings and when they have the most impact, you don't have the license to go face that yeah. often because it's such a fight for board. But we could see Mom more... just get it down. If he wants to go Kane face. Sure. I mean, I definitely think it's Kane yeah. in some capacity on this turn. I like this. The earlier aggressive. the Felwing, the we bigger saw this the payoff. Over and over from Chonsu versus Surrender, which is each player saying, no, I'm the aggressor. No, I'm the aggressor. <laughs> and pushing face over and over. Mm -hmm. And you think that Tom does have the liberty here to just push on the aggressive. I mean, he's been far ahead. The freeze for Shaxi was big in that it prevented... Uh, Tom from also clearing off the Frozen Shadow Weaver, but Tom has just got stuff to do for the next turn, Demons. and he is still ahead on board even if he doesn't Demons. take the straight. Yep. It's fine. Shaxi now with Shaxi's the... turn is so awkward. Yeah, the only... Okay, so the two plays I'm seeing are obviously Kane or go for the double one-drop hero power. Uh, there is some merit to go for the one-drop hero power, uh, double one-drop hero power, just because you can give your health buff to the Shadow Weaver, take a value trade, even take out the Cane if you wanted to, I suppose. Yeah, I'm definitely looking at that over the Cane, because no matter which way you slice it, if you don't buff the Shadow Weaver, it just is yeah. too painful to lose that Cane. But I mean, realistically, as long as Tom has any kind of decent development whatsoever, he should mm -hmm. pull into a very strong position here. Indeed. On the double skulls, which is about the worst you can get at this point in the game. But later on, it could be huge. And even then, it's just not that bad for him. He can get the skull down on turn 6, very happily after he plays the Chaos Strike on 5. on board and ahead on health not much more you can ask for in the demon hunter mirror yeah, not sure entirely how i feel about that final trade there into the minion given that his opponent's face was frozen i think he could have gotten away with a push all face there agreed but aside from that the main point is he has got himself in a dominant position in the early game i grow impatient Taxi's only response pretty much is just Kane to value trade into the Shadow Weaver, but it's so painful to do seeing as Tom just has the weapon already charged Hide up. Behind your I will still find you. Okay, taking this trade means that Tom has to commit at least a hero power from Shaxi's perspective. Oh, oh the Seder as well! Tom just has not had a dead turn despite having both Balls in hand. Yeah, he's just not slowing down anytime soon. Shaxi's only real hope, I think, here is to hit the god tier altruist after the skull of Ulla. And the skull right now has to hit the eye beams and not in the outcast position, I would say. It's just too much damage. Yeah, true. And he can't deal with anything that Tom has on board. That is already <laughs> just 10. Tom has. Ooh, the so mana much burn he can do. That is a We're very seeing this from Hunter equation. Race. Yeah. It's not a bad card, but definitely not coming down on this turn when Skull is available yeah. to come down. Metamorphosis and Altruist. Oh my gosh. Pack it up, Gia. This We're is over. It really is over. Mana Burn, only world champions have the wrinkly <laughs> enough brain to play this. 
telling you, Lion has it in her <laughs> her demon hunter <laughs> list over in the gold series circuit. I'm sure she does. Well, that means that nothing can even really be outcasted. There is just nothing. The concede will come down, and Tom is going to go up to one game apiece. Then, of course, the differences between the two lists are uh, very, very small. Of course, the Rogue has taken a win for Shaxi, whereas the Demon Hunter has taken a win for Tom. I guess I would overall say that that benefits uh, Shaxi, given the Rogue is harder to take a win with, I think. I mean, prior to today, I would have agreed with you, but just watching the performance of Demon Hunter so far against other classes, I'm suddenly less and less convinced. But the Fair fact enough. that there is a Druid, which is in the equation, which I think is undisputedly a better matchup into Rogue than it is into Demon Hunter, mm -hmm. I will agree with you for this series. I'm glad that you will agree with me, Gia, because I am always right, as has been proven time and time again by my cast here on Asia Pacific. Hi, DJ. Didn't know I was casting with you today. <laughs> very funny. Very, very funny, Gia. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I think aside from that, it is definitely the uh, the Demon Hunter that should still be in a good spot here for Tom 602. Oh, sorry, for Shaxi to take a win with. But uh, it was the deck that was shakiest for him in the previous series. So maybe it will be the weak point, like you were saying, versus the Rogue. It's only so powerful when you're playing it at the highest level. True enough. And... You know, that end of the game there, I think we could see Shaxi really upset by the pan out. From his perspective, he had a shot. Had he not drawn something very expensive like the Warglaze off the top, he would have been able to clear the board with an altruist turn and potentially swing it from there. Just from his perspective, though, we know that Tom would have had the lethal anyway with Metamorphosis in hand, but that is also just going to be playing on Shaxi's mind. Always a big factor to consider over in our beloved region. Sure, Will Gia. And the next matchup that we were talking about a little bit there is going to be Druid on Rogue, with Tom, of course, with his remaining Rogue. It does get a little bit more interesting, however, when we factor in the Highlander variant for Tom, because I think one of the biggest reasons why Rogue is at such a disadvantage up against the Druid is they have effectively zero board clears. Uh, the mm -hmm. best that it gets uh, is Flick on the board full of Glowflies that allows you to potentially pull things back, or more likely, just a massive Edwin to dominate the start of the game. Uh, but Highlander Rogue completely flips that equation on its head. Yes, the Inkling of Zephyrus is the very big one, which most often, I think, is used for board clear, but also in those niche situations where Rogue is able to get ahead really early, can just present uh, lethal and um, just race the Druid before they can even really consolidate their board. Already, though, a premium hand for Shaxi with just Overgrowth and Exotic Mount Cellar alone. I think I expect the other two to be mulliganed away. Throws away the Mount Cellar. Mm. That I that disagree with strongly. I think particularly against Rogue, the payoff of Mount Cellar versus Glowfly is not as good because they can they bounce it back in your hand. Whereas sure. the early Glowfly can potentially be, well, a lot of the time, game winning, straight up. But I will say that did look a little fishy to me as well. Yeah, well, I mean, because you're not killing, getting pressured in the early turn. Killing your opponent on turn four is better than killing them on turn five, but I would gladly take either, <laughs> to be perfectly <laughs> honest. <laughs> Very well put, Derek. But Shaxi has just drawn both of the overflows, so we're going to be. Seeing an alternative game plan here, oh, which is yes. draw and then get your mount sellers for even more payoff. Yeah, he of course has the decision of whether to go coin overgrowth and then vate overflow, doing everything a turn earlier, or does he want to save the two uh, coin effects in the coin and the vate for a mount seller by delaying everything a turn? I think because he's just drawing so much off of the overflow itself. I think I would like to see him mm. accelerate it. Fair enough. Of course, we can see things get even more complicated, however, with all the secrets that, of course, now have to be taken into account. Counterspell in hand for Tom could oh, yeah. be so devastating. If that can hit Overflow, even though it is unlikely, that could just be game-ending on the spot. Agreed. It is very backwards here. Elise, the Druid, has to deal <laughs> with their own minion here. 
very awkward for Shaxi. He knows it's not Noble Sack, though, yeah. so he can just go face this. He doesn't know that it's not Never Surrender, though, which is why he's holding back on the coin there, I think, and realizing, okay, we've got to be careful here. Redemption and Never Surrender are both pretty devastating if he goes for this line of coining out the um, no Iron Bark, yeah. Which is, in fact, not Fog Beam possessed. <laughs> 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 Arc Swarm of Shiffin is a card that I have not seen so far in Hearthstone Grandmasters, I've got to say, but it's one of those yeah. primes, I think, where the first half is just kind of better than the second half. You're really just playing it for a 3-4 with Taunt, which is pretty insane stats. 3-4 plus something is good, because Spider Tank alone was a good card in its right. day. So both Akama and Mishifin are pretty okay. I would say Tom's generations this game have been above average. Uh, no, sorry, G, there's not a comma in Mishif and there's an, an apostrophe. Sorry, I'm fixing myself out. Mummy needs five more minutes. You know what, that was actually pretty good, but <laughs> I don't want to give you <laughs> the satisfaction of laughing. Fair enough, I'll do it myself then, as nobody else will. But one player who I imagine is laughing, at least internally and... right now, is Tom60229. Look at this devastating start for him. He's so far ahead on board. And to be perfectly honest, look how good an exotic mount seller would be here. Yep, you're right. And even if it weren't that, the overflow a turn earlier could have drawn him into a mount seller mm -hmm. for this turn still. Granted, like a lot of these cheaper spells might not have been available, but he could have just drawn more to replace them. Yep. And we're looking at... <laughs> Just the sap for lethal? He will heal, but there's so much damage on the board. There's Eviscerate. Oh, and still, none of the no meat beam. of the deck coming through for Shaxi. And like you say, none of even the good removal is really coming through yet. Time waits for no one. I'm gonna coin out the crystal power for healing. Oh, sorry. The double Innervate Wrath. Oh, man, that makes least I mean, uh, Mount Seller off the top so yeah. bad now. The lengths that he is having to go to here to remove off this board is devastating, especially with the Meshiffin being healed up by the Redemption into the Overflow means it can't be killed off with the Moonflyer oh here gosh. as well. Brutal. Disaster after disaster. And now with Flick off the top, if that's even the play here, I guess with Sap, Probably just going with that instead and keeping up the pressure. I think Tom is looking to develop this counter spell should another overflow come down. I feel like just a mount seller, he's sitting pretty. And even so, a counter spell reduces the mount seller activations by one. True. There's a lot of cheap spells that can disrupt it in this druid, though. So many were just used. Hmm. Well, at the very least, it's something for Shaxi to try and work through here because this just makes the situation even more complicated. Absolutely a dire situation indeed for Shaxi. He can immediately proc the CS. I mean, if he's playing Overflow, he should play a Moonfire first anyway so that he doesn't overdraw. Correct. Yeah, Starfall, while a little bit tempting, I think you just have to start turboing towards your Mount Cellar because there really was just no other way you could have found it earlier on in the game, unfortunately. The problem is, what does the Mount Cellar even do now? Almost all of the zero-cost spells have been used. Good question. Probably saves this moon. Okay. It doesn't want to overdraw, I guess. But what draw off the top is better than another proc for Mount Cellar guaranteed, right? Yeah, you tell me, Gia. I don't think there is one. Um, I'm looking for some cute lethals here by backstabbing your own grand mummy, but I don't think it's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite seeing it. You is know it what? Just... I wouldn't hate just a tog. Tog, yeah. I'm thinking yep. tempo tog. Let's go. Uh huh. I like it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> and it's immediate. More pressure, sure. 
Tempo. Six Altruist five, Tempo. Tog. Oh. You've seen it all in AFAC today. Okay. That was something Shaxi needed. Yep. He can now clear off the Tempo Tog. <laughs> and then he Also dive. needs Diving Griffin. Yeah. Diving Griffin's taunts anything just to try and fend this off. Well, he's got to go. The I'd, only alternate line... I tell you what... Yeah. Uh, sorry, is to go for Bog Beam, obviously with the Mount Cellar, and then Fungal Fortunes. Right. Um, to try and hit Innovate, but there's not even anything to really bait into. I think he's played the Innervates, right? I was going to say, I couldn't both? tell you oh, what yeah. cheap spells are left in the deck. Uh, there's definitely been at least one, and we've seen both Moonfires for sure. We've seen a Crystal Power. Uh, potentially, potentially Iron Bark, the other one. I think he's played both of those as well. Oh, oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Opla, one of the better ones. Okay, a taunt. That is uh, not enough to keep him alive. Definitely not. Oh, I wanted to see another cute lethal here. You trade the cat and the grandmommy, and then the chicken <laughs> goes up the floor. And then you go in, uh, eviscerate hero power, right? The, another minion first for the combo, but whatever. Tom gets it done. Two to one. As Rogue versus Druid. This is the matchup where we said maybe that's the reason for bringing Druid in the first place. But if you can't even get that one done, what more of a chance do you have against the Human Hunt? Yeah, and it wasn't even the like weird kind of fact that Highlander gives you where you can hit Zephyrus and clear off the board. It was just curving out with rogue minions. Not even especially powerful ones, to be perfectly honest. It wasn't a huge Edwin to blow out the game. It was just a decently powerful Hanar that was able to get over the finish line, of course. And again, I just want to hark back to not keeping the Mount Cellar there. I, I just really, really disagree with that line of thinking because I think Overgrowth and the Mount Cellar in hand is the dream against rogue. I would also agree. If you're thinking about how druids are build at this point. At the time, I was giving Shaxi the benefit of the doubt because Glowfly does seem like the premier way to win, but Mount Cellar early also is very, very strong and you're yep. only running those two copies of each card. There's right. no Ysera at the top. Yeah. So if you're going to give away half of your best win conditions, it just seems a little bit too ambitious in my opinion. I will agree with you there, but Shaxi does have what is supposedly a favorable matchup now left with the yeah. Demon Hunter up against Druid, but at least here in APAC, Gia, with the stats we saw at the start of the morning, I think Demon Hunter actually has a uh, below 50% win rate up against Druid. Uh, there's something in the water here because Druid is managing to get the job done up against Demon Hunter, and I feel like if anyone is going to understand the proactive, above-all-costs game plan, uh, Tom is the kind of player to do so. Yeah, we did have a very small sample size, of course. It of was course. just round robin and APAC as of last week. But if you include today, that's another 0-2 um, <laughs> for Druid versus yeah. Demon Hunter. I feel like it's going to even out if it's not at 50% now. It's just getting closer to what we know to be objectively, I think, true based on a larger sample size of data, which is that Demon Hunter just is better against Druid. Yeah, it is actually 2-1. Rivius was able to beat Possessia with the Demon Hunter ah, in the last game of the day. So not quite the full sweep for Druid today up against the Demon Hunter. And maybe Shaxi can again turn things around here. But already, I think Tom has got a pretty spicy looking hand indeed. Indeed. Oh, I love the Innervate keep. We yep. didn't see this from Possessia, but I think this is the best way that you have to fight back against Demon Hunter. The turn three goes. Oh. The turn two goes. <laughs> <laughs> What would that even be like? Okay, two surely. Glow flies. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Obviously, not enough spells for that to happen. But oh my gosh, that would have been so funny. <laughs> Can you imagine with old school innovate? You just go vape, vape, glow fly for a two two. <laughs> okay, blow torch that keeps the curve, keeps the pressure coming. This is exactly what you want to do as Shaxi here. Tom, with the option of playing a Moonfire here to immediately remove the Sightless Watcher along with Hero Power, but that is one less spell for the Glowfly. Well, 
I'm already seeing Gia a, a plan to completely deviate from the starting plan and go Moonfire Hero Power here, as you suggested, coin overgrowth into innovate overflow on turn six, or at least on six mana, uh, and then follow up with the Glowfly or the Mount Seller if you've drawn it after that. Yeah, both valid. I don't think it's cut and dry that he's going to go for that. Yep. I think that the coin innervate Glowfly still is potentially very strong. It would depend though on what shacks he's developing. This Which of course we knew to be the Black Dodge Saboteur, but of course Tom could have expected some kind of decent development, Ooh, I think. With the second overflow in hand, I think that is definitely a signal for Tom to go for this instead. I love this from Tom. I think this is such good deviation from the expected line here. He kept two cards, which he was clearly hoping to go for on turn three with Coin Bait Glowfly. But he's just deviated to, I think, a much stronger plan because of, again, the lack of Glowflies because he didn't have enough spells in hand. Yeah, very true. It is it scary, is. however. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Worth noting, of course, that as Demon Hunter, there is not that much of a wide board payoff. And Tom, Ooh. thinking that he doesn't have time to go for Overflow, just plays a Glowfly here. Just says, please, oh please, do not have Warclaves of Azanoth in your hand. <laughs> it's pretty disastrous. Big yikes. Huge yikes. Hmm. Ought to be a very big punish, even if Tom can go Overflow next turn. I don't think he'll have mana to do anything significant against Shakti's board and feel out of range of this. That was such an interesting play. It seems so obvious to just play out your Glowfly there before you go for the Overflow, but that dis one decision alone could have such wide-reaching consequences here. Does he think he still has time to go Overflow the turn after and then go for the biggest Mount Seller ever? I don't think he has time for anything. Yeah. I would like to see Shaxi trade this off because of Iron Bark, but I am not sure if you're meant to put the 3 4 into it or a 2 2. Well, Starfall isn't in the list for Tom, I don't think. So, yeah, you have the liberty to do this. But then it puts it in range of a fog team. That's true. Oh, well, if you're expecting Overflow, it does just heal up again, so. Fair point there. <gasps> Nothing! Again, these druids are just oh, drawing dead! Man. I haven't seen a fungal fortunes on curve in far too long. <laughs> That's not the druid I know. Yeah, exactly. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage available on this oh, turn, which means Shaxi is, well is in easily in range with Metamorphosis next turn of closing out the game, even with a very, very powerful uh, comeback by Tom. Absolutely right. If we are going to see Mount Seller off the top, it has got to generate tons of taunts. And that is not it. He could try to fish with the Rising Wind. There's I'd not even to... board space. Oh, yeah. So, Vape Rising Wings. Wins. Yeah. Hmm. That doesn't seem like a winning line to me. But then again, what does it? Oh, another oh. overflow here. All right. From Tom's perspective, I guess it is limited things. I mean, he Healer can hit just crystal if, power yeah. to heal. Right. He can hit bog beam to remove. Yeah. Exactly that. Put Shaxi a little bit out of range this turn. But the Mount Sellers are still in the bottom 10 for Tom. And the cane off the top is such a huge draw here. The fact oh, that yeah. it removes the possibility for Taunts to even get anywhere close, I think just locks out Shaxi for a win. We agree. That is rough for Tom. I even got the full 10 mana to cycle wild growth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that obviously Tom did not mulligan away a Mount Seller here. And if he had against Demon Hunter, I think you have the argument to call it correct. But it really does just show the necessity to hit one of your power minions earlier on in the game than this. 
And the thing is, he wants to play Fungal Fortunes to draw, but at this point, it probably just yep. discards your Mount Cellars. And you're out of a win condition. Maybe he's thinking Glowfly and Glowfly My alone gave him full. here. Doesn't okay, even get the second one. Soul of the Forest being gone is fine. And as long as he can clear off everything, he's alive. Which is some something to hold on to. Yeah. He can't clear off everything, especially with that expensive hero power. But he can set up Hunt, yeah. which from his perspective can save him. The Kane hero power... A little bit off, but Taxi has so many draws. I mean, it's lethal here with the metamorphosis that was set up last oh, right. turn, right? Two games apiece now for Shaxi versus Tom. Even that draw for top would have done it anyway, even if the uh, Kane hadn't done it. And again, Druid just looking weaker this series. I don't know what it was, but missing the power cards somehow, time and time again, has just been the downfall of these Druids. Tell you what it is, Derek. It is double Mount Cellar bottom five. Yeah, that'll do Yikes. it, actually. <laughs> yeah, and obviously I have different uh, qualms and for both Yusera. of them. And There's a Ysera in this list for Tom, I just noticed. That was also unfortunate. All the minions were at the bottom. What? Yeah, even the second Glowfly as well a little bit earlier might have been enough to fight back against the board earlier on. Um, what can you say? It's the, the problem with running a deck that only has like three minions and like five good proactive cards overall. Sometimes you just don't hit them. I, I take. I, I have some qualms with that argument. How often have we even seen that from Druid? I think that was a giga low roll. I think the way that Druid is built with enough sure. card draw and removal is that even if the deck, yes, can have very dead hands, more often than not, you're including enough draw to make sure that doesn't happen. I think that was highly unfortunate for Tom. But still, good on Shaxi for um, you know, just doing the right things, saving that cane for after the metamorphosis development turn makes a lot of sense to me. Well, Gia, I, I have heard your prayers and I have answered. You are not happy with that druid gameplay, so I'm going to give you a little bit more now. We have a druid <laughs> mirror between Tom and Shaxi to close things out. We've seen this already a couple times today. We're going to see it quite a few more times with 15 out of 16 of the players bringing druid, and I believe it never going to be banned if my predictions are correct. And uh, the only real, uh, again, kind of alternative game plan that is opened up to these players is the fact that Shaxi is running a Starfall. Outside of that, we are looking at Ramp, Glowfly, and Exotic Mount Cellar as the only real things you're looking for. Indeed. The only difference is that, aside from that Starfall, uh, Tom has, I think, the Sarah in place of that. The rest of the deck okay. is a complete mirror. Well, there we go. Tom, Overgrowth, Ooh. Mount Cellar. I love it. Even though it's not the Glowfly Swarm, which is the premium option in the Druid Mirror, I think he realizes, as long as my opponent doesn't have it, this puts me in the driving seat. I'm not 100% sure about that, because Glowfly does seem to be there more often than not, because people are hard mulliganing for it, in my experience. But the fact that Shaxi is running Starfall is one more reason for Tom not to rely so heaven heavily on getting his own glow fly. Uh, and especially for me, because Shaxi is on the coin, he's more likely to be able to get it down first, unless you hit exactly innovate, which means you're going to have less spells in hand anyway to go for the uh, glow fly, unless you hit fungal fortunes as well. It's a lot of layers, I think, that have Ooh. to go right, whereas the uh, the overgrowth into Mount Cellar is good enough. My hand is too full. We already saw from Tom there, he had the option of just Tossing his crystal power still saves Innervate yeah. for the Mount Cellar turn, but he saves both of them together because they work hand in hand with the Mount Cellar turn. I like it a lot despite him overdrawing. All right. This is the payoff for Tom's line of play. He needs some pretty nice, juicy beasts here, however, to line up against the double power of the world that Shaxi has ready to come down. Gosh. One decent beast and one very mediocre one. He has another shot with the Wrath. Kill mm -hmm. a Glowfly. But if he doesn't hit Punt or Rush, how much damage are we look looking at here? <laughs> the first Griffin of the day! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's been far too long. But Shaxi just has Soul of the Forest here. 
I mean, Shaxi has myriad incredibly powerful plays. Soul of the Forest, um, double innovate, power of the wild, power of the wild. I don't know about using coin innovate for the other one just because he's got counselor in hand. Sure. But I think just the one buff and Soul of the Forest is very strong. However, now that I say it, it lines up pretty poorly into the Mount Cellar because he definitely has to kill that. It would mean three trades versus just two if right. he were to go for the double buff. So he could forego the Soul of the Forest altogether and just go for a development double buff. I wonder if he's foregoing the clear on the Mount Cellar altogether. No, he's going for everything but the Soul of the Forest. All in! Wow! All right. I think this is fine too. It works. As long as you can clear off the Mount Cellar. Yeah. Tom doesn't run Starfall. Which means he doesn't really have a way back into the game, to be perfectly honest here. Agreed. It would have had to have been exactly the other Mount Cellar and a whole flurry of additional spells, but it is not available. Um, with the Overflow yeah. and a Prayer, but everything is out of range of a single Bog Beam. I mean, he has to survive the turn, first of all, and then he has to hit Ysera or the Mount Cellar to have a chance here. I'd say he's still massively on the back foot, but if he can go Ysera in to draw a whole bunch of the big spells, maybe we're talking. Right. He goes for this Bog Beam here to allow him the shot of drawing Moonfire for the mm -hmm. next turn to deal with it. If you're Shaxi, though... Is it not just I kind of like the look of just... Yeah, I like that. Just a 5-8. Yeah. You made the point very clearly last time. That is just difficult for Druid to remove. Yeah, I like that a lot. I guess he wants to go with the Soul of the Forest board to go nice and wide, but I just want the most attack power on board as possible to punch through a big Ysera Iron Bug or a Mount Cellar Iron Bug. Yeah, especially given that he doesn't have one of those payoff cards for going wide for sure. hand anymore. My dream is all right, one dragon in the face of all the beasts. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> a ton of health, but I don't think it gets there. It's just dead on board. Right? It is just dead on board, but is Tom dead on board? I think Well, now, with that yes. draw, yes, he is. Nine. Uh, yeah, that's GG. That's just game. Mm -hmm. Six damage from the spells, another nine from an eagle and a glowfly. And there is 12 remaining to go face. Didn't even need the hero power to close this out. Shaxi will be taking the series, going up to 3-2 to two and handing Tom his first loss of the round robin. A brutal loss there for Tom, who I think played a very, very strong series of Hearthstone there, even though his druid was just getting so consistently smashed um, at all points by Shaxi's game plan. But I think he understood the matchup very, very well again. We can talk about the merits of keeping Overgrowth plus Mount Cellar instead of full mulling for the Glowfly Swarm, as was clearly demonstrated to be the superior card in the matchup. But I think given that he had no sight of an Overgrowth, sorry, no sight of a Glowfly Swarm or a Fungal Fortunes in hand, I really liked his just solid, good enough game plan there, which, to be fair, almost got him the win. Yeah, um, I would tend to agree with you there. I still couldn't be sure I would yeah. have to defer to the Japanese players. I really <laughs> wish I could speak Japanese right now so I could ask <laughs> them right now about the mulligan. And two, so I could understand Possessi's tweets because he has been just going on Twitter after his game. But it just seems like there's still so much unexplored about Druid mulligans. The matchup itself seems pretty cut and dry. If you can get on board first, you win. But how do you approach yeah. the turns leading up to getting on board and how are you supposed to mulligan do you go for the good enough or the best possible uh it's very very hard to know and i think overall at a first glance i really liked the way that tom was approaching it shaxi not so much in a couple of those games but his gameplay i think felt a lot more on the money for the most part but we're going to take a look at the schedule now that that is done and shaxi has taken the win propelling him up to three and two overall